Hello, this is Julie from CutterCrafter.com. Today I'd like to show you how to make this Irish Blessings card. You'll notice that it has a 3D shamrock here with some smaller ones and a Celtic shamrock here. And then when you open the card, you get a pop-up that says Irish Blessings. You can see how it stands out that way. So we're, that's what we're going to make today. I'm just going to show you how to assemble this card. So we'll need to get all the pieces out and start putting it together. You can work along with me and pause the video as you need to. And let's get started. I have all my pieces in an envelope here. The first one I'm going to take out is the big green card. This one has a score line down the middle. You can see it here. And what we want to do is fold this. This is the main card and fold it in half along the score line and crease it well. You can just crease it with your fingers or you can use a bone folder to give it a good nice crease. The next thing we're going to do is take the printed front decorative panel and we're going to put it so that the light part is at the bottom of the card and the dark part is at the top. So you'll need some glue for this. You can use any kind of glue. I'm going to use my art glitter glue. It's an old bottle. It works for a long time. And I'm going to take off the fine tip. I don't need it for this right now. But what you can use any kind of glue for this part. It does help to have a dry, clear type of glue later on for doing the, the glittering. But for now, just putting glue around the edges and on the back. And then center this on the front of the card. And press it down so that it is firm. I like this glue because it dries very quickly. You might have to let yours dry a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is take out the pop-up part of the card. That's this piece. When you get it, it's flat. You flatten it out like this. What we want to do is glue some of the pieces onto it. So let's take these lighter green pieces here. There are three pieces, a little rectangle, a small piece, and a large piece. And these are the decorative papers that go inside the cards. So the first thing I'm going to do is put glue around the edges some in the middle and then place it on the bottom half of the white card so this centered you can make sure that the side is centered here and here you have a little space at the bottom there and then we're going to take the top piece, this piece, and again put glue near the edges. If you only have a glue stick, that'll work fine. Any kind of glue. If you have a dry line tape runner, that will work. So this piece is going on the top half of the card just a little ways from the edges. The easiest place to line it up is right here on the side where this little notch goes in and on this side. Press it down firmly all the way around until it dries. You haven't folded your card yet. I pre-folded mine. 
Okay, then you're going to put some glue on this little rectangle. And we're going to put that across this bar right above the Irish lettering and kind of center it in that rectangle there. You have a moment to slide it around if you're using wet glue. If you're using a dry liner, it's less forgiving. Okay, so now we have the inside of the card decorated. We're going to fold the inside of the card next. So the first thing you want to do is find the side center points here and pinch them from the back like this. You can turn it over here. You see if you just slightly bend it, then you'll see where the score lines are and you pinch it right on the score lines. The next place that we are going to pinch from the back is at the bottoms of the letters. So when you turn this over, pinch at the bottom of each letter, just pinch Pinch it together right at the bottom. There are score lines there, so you're going to pinch it nicely. And you can even turn it over and pinch all the way across. So now you have a fold at the center, and then you have a fold on the card at the bottom of the letters. Now the next place we want to pinch is at the top of the letters from the front side up. So there's a little score line right at the top of each letter. We're going to from the front pinch it together like this and to make sure we got it real good we can Just pinch this down, I don't know if you can see this. And then from the back, from the back side, there's a score line right here. We're going to pinch that down from the back. Squeeze that score line right here. Squeeze it all the way across. And once you get that all the way across, you can press this down, then again press real good at the center fold on the side. Now when you open this up, you have a pop-up card. Now this is the inside of the card and it's going to need to be glued. This is the pop-up mechanism. It's going to need to be glued inside of this card. So with the card top side here, I'm going to open it and we're going to place the center folds right against the folds in the center of the card. And just to make sure that it's in the right place you can open it like this and then test it to make sure it's at the right position. Once you know where it's going to be, you can fold this part down. And now we're going to add some glue around the edges, but we're not going to put any glue on the letters, just on the edges of this thin pop-up. Try not to get extra glue where you don't want it to be. So line up the center fold on the white card right where you want it. Same amount of green on either side. And then close the lid carefully and press. So now we're going to wait until it dries because if we 
Don't wait until it dries, then we could have a little mess. But this dr glue dries really quickly. So what I'm going to do now is open the card, lay it on its back side so that the other side of the card is ready to glue. I had some glue on my fingers, so I'm just wiping it on here. Now I'm going to take the glue and again glue around the edges. Don't get too much glue or you'll have puddles all over the place. And we don't want to put glue on the green part, just on the white part. Once you have that glue, you're going to close the back side over this white space and again press all the way around. Press firmly. And when it's dry, you can open it up and you'll have the inside of your pop-up card finished. If you want to, right here, you can sign your name, put a little note, but the inside pretty much is finished there. So the, nat the last part we're going to do is decorate the front of the card. So I'm going to show you how to decorate that. First we're going to going to get our shamrock design and I'm going to put this in the upper right corner here because I want room to put the 3D shamrock here. So I'm going to take my glue. This is where you want to it helps to have a fine point tip. And you're going to put glue on the thick stem and try to get tiny bits of glue on the outer edge. And you want to make sure that you get maybe some of the thicker lines inside with glue so that it'll stay where it needs to be. If you get too slow doing this, your quick dry glue might dry before you get it down. So work as quickly as you can with this. Some people like to use a dotted adhesive runner, but you probably don't have any of that. So. But you could put some glue on a sponge and then dab it on. Uh, I'll just do this around the edges best I can. If you get it around the outside edges, it's not likely to be a problem popping off your card. This is really strong adhesive, so it will stay. If you're using a glue stick, get as much glue as you can because those don't like to stay where the, where you put them all the time. Okay, so I've got glue all over and I'm going to put it in the upper corner here. And that'll give me some room. And just press it. Press it down. And now we're going to shape our 3D shamrock. And to do that, you can use a piece of foam. You can use fun foam doubled over like, like this. Or you can use a, a mouse pad. Anything that has a little give to it. This one is a firm foam. And then I'm going to use a shaping tool that has a two ball tips. So I'll use kind of the, I don't need a giant tip. A tip like this might work or maybe maybe you have a pen that has a kind of a flat or a little rounded top. Even a smaller one will work too. Use what you have. Maybe you want to use an eraser for a pencil. That would work too. So what we're going to do first 
let's get out the shamrocks. We should have three larger ones and five smaller ones. We'll start with one first. And you put the back side down for the paper I used. Front and back are the same, so it doesn't matter. But you put the back side face up. And you take your shaping tool, your ball tip, or your pen. I wonder if it will work with a pencil. Let's try it. It's a little hard because it leaves, the eraser leaves a mess here. So I think I'll um, try using just my ball tip. A, a pen without the eraser will probably work better. Roll it around the whole petal. This breaks down the fibers. So we'll do that for each of the petals. We're just going to roll it around till the petals lift up. Roll it around the center. Roll it around each of the humps. And you're just going to roll straight down. The more pressure you give, the higher the lift. And you'll notice it has a lift there. Then roll it in the middle. If you want it to really lift up, pull from the top of the petal towards the center and it'll lift up even higher. Now what I want to do is turn it over to the right side and press down in the middle. Now the harder you press, the higher the lift will be. You can see um, if you want a deeper foam, you can get the, the petals to lift even higher by pressing more in the center. So if you see this is, the petals are, are lifted up quite a bit. Now you can do it, if you're going to mail it, you don't want a real high lift because they'll probably press down low again. So now, I'm going to do the second petal the same way, round and around on each petal and in the center, breaking the fibers. And this is pretty lightweight paper. You could do it with, if, if you wanted to do it with a different kind of paper, you could. I'm just swirling it around, swirl it around in the middle. Doing it from the back side will help the petals have this curved kind of look once you turn it over. So I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to press it in the middle. That doesn't have a lot of lift, but when I stack this one on it, you see one can have more lift than the other. You can do these however you want. If you want it, again, to have the petals to have more lift, double your foam or quadruple it if you're using fun foam and just press down. Now we have one more large one. We'll do the same thing. Round and around and around. Again, anything with a round tip will work. Some of those uh, big stick pens have a nice rounded top you could use. But try what you have that has a smooth round surface on it. Now I'm on the other side. I'm working on the inside. And to get more lift, just make a thicker foam. The mouse pad will work. And it lifts. So what I'm going to do next is do five of the little petals. It's easier to do these just round and around because they're small on one side and then press down in the middle and there you have a nice 3D but a single layer. So you do it on, on the back side just round and around on each petal a few times and in the center and then turn it over press it in the center and you're good to go. Do it again. This is number four. Press in the center. Turn it over and press in the center. 
number five the same way. Now you can stop the video and replay if you uh, need more time. I've got five there now. The next thing I want to do on these is start stacking them together. Now the big one is going to have three large petals and one small in the middle. So to put these together, what I'm going to do first is put just a little pile of glue in the center and then I'm going to get the next layer. The next layer is going to be offset from the first layer so that the petal goes in the space in between the first one. And I like to press down in the center to again give it a little more lift. And now I'm going to put a little pile of glue in the center of that one and offset the next petal layer. Again, putting the petals in the space. You could use hot glue on this. Uh, using quick dry glue gives you a little more wiggle room to reposition these if they're not quite where you want them to be. Now we have one more layer to do. We'll put a little bit of glue in the center and we'll put one of these little tiny shamrocks in the middle again offsetting the petal. I've got this petal on the space between the bigger petals. So now that I have my big shamrock done, I'm going to put it in this other corner on my card. So to get it to stay there, I'm just going to put glue again on the center of the back, just a little puddle, and put it on the card where I want it to be. You can press it down with the foam pad under there to help it stay. We'll let it dry. Now the next thing we're going to do is put the little flower, the smaller shamrocks into position. Put a little piece of dot of glue on the center back and we'll put one here and you can put them where you want. Put one here in between the leaves of the larger one and one in the top corner. So I have three on this side. And one more. A place on the opposite upper corner. Again, if you want to press them down, you can. It's best to let these dry a little bit. Now, if you would like to add some glitter, like I did on my my card, you'll see that I added glitter to the center of each one of the smaller shamrocks and I also added glitter onto my um, large Celtic one. I use gold glitter but you can, I, I think I like it better with the white glitter, but you can use any glitter that you have. and. So to get that glitter on, I use a dries clear glue so that if you're using glue that doesn't dry clear, you're gonna, you might see a residue of it and you might just want to leave it like it is. What I'm going to do is put just a little bit of glue in the center of each shamrock. And then I'm going to smear on some glue wherever I want glitter to be on this big shamrock here. Now again, it tends to dry pretty fast. So get it on there as quickly as you can. You could always add more if it dries too quickly. 
I'm just trying to get it on a little bit of glue on each one. It doesn't have to be solid because as you can see on this one, the, the glitter is intermittent. So put your glue on. Now you're also going to need a piece of a couple pieces of um, printer paper. It can doesn't have to be new paper. It can be from your recycle pile. But we want to have a couple pieces of paper to help catch the extra glitter or you're going to have glitter all over your table. And glitter likes to cling to us in weird places, you end up with glitter on your face. Glitter everywhere. Okay, so what we want to do is get a piece of paper and fold it in half like this. This will um, catch the excess glitter for us. So I'm going to put my card in the middle of this piece of paper. Now I've got my glitter in a little bottle like this, but if you have it in a packet like this, you can open your packet corner of it and just sprinkle it on. I'm going to sprinkle it on here wherever. First, I'm going to sprinkle it on the center of each shamrock where I put the glue. And then I'm going to just sprinkle it all over. You don't have to be precise. After you get it sprinkled, then tap it off. Now you still see all the glue right now but that's okay because my glue will dry clear. If you're using glue that dries white well you might still see the glue so that's up to you. Now that I have this glittered I'm going to set it aside to dry and I'm going to Pour this glitter back into my jar. I'm going to put the jar on a piece of paper and fold up this other piece of paper with the glitter in it and just pour the glitter back into the bottle or if you're using one of the little pouches of glitter from the dollar store, you can pour it back into that little envelope like that. And then you'll have some glitter for the next project. Now I still see particles of glitter on this paper. You could fold it in half and set the glitter back on your original paper and dump in. The less of the mess you make, the less you'll have to clean up afterwards. Be sure to close your glitter jar if you're using one. And we're done. So this is what we have. We have a lovely shamrock top card top. And when we open it up, we have the Irish Blessings greeting inside and you can put any other messages that you have or sign your card and you can put it in an envelope. Now this card measures seven inches wide by five inches tall. It'll fit in a standard five by seven envelope that you can mail. You could put it in your envelope, but you'll notice uh, first of all, you don't want to put it in while it's wet because it can get glued. And if you want the, the 3D shamrocks to stand up, you don't want to put it in an envelope because they'll get smushed. You can hand deliver it. But if you're mailing it, you might need to press down the 3D shamrocks a little bit to get it into the envelope. Or you can use a larger envelope that it'll slide into perfectly um, okay. 
I've made some envelopes that have pleated sides that work. But if you want to smush down your, your shamrock as you put it in the envelope, that's fine too. I just wanted you to have something special to give to someone special for celebration of our Irish heritage. So have fun. You can replay this video as much as you like. Stop it and start it so that you can follow along and make the card. Thanks for watching. Bye.